When language barriers exist, the verifications to ensure you are administering medications to the right patient are doubly important. Baby Juan was born 30 minutes ago. A standing order exists that all babies are to receive IM vitamin K and erythromycin eye ointment within one hour of birth. The nurse enters the room and administers both medications. This nurse, and I need to give him a shot in his thigh, and then I'm going to put some medicina in his eyes right there. Okay. Juan's parents do not speak English, so the nurse pantomimes what she needs to do. Note that the parents look puzzled, but are unable to communicate. What did the nurse fail to do? When the nurse returns to the med cart to record the medication, another nurse is there doing the same. There's a little one in 123, the cutest thing. Did you see they had a bear? Juan in room 123? I thought it was Luis in room 123. I just gave him his newborn meds. I gave him his newborn meds too. As the two nurses talk, they suddenly realize that Juan has received medications from both of them. Nurse number two gave them correctly. Nurse number one thought she was giving them to a baby named Louis, who was born minutes after Juan in the other room. Hi, I'm Colleen, and I'm going to give your baby his newborn medicine. I need to give him a little shot. If nurse number one had checked Juan's ID band, and brought an interpreter to explain what she wanted to do, this error could have been avoided. Distraction is a common reason for medication errors. Mrs. Jones was admitted two days ago for dehydration secondary to diarrhea. She has a history of Alzheimer's disease. Her medication orders read Aricept 5 mg by mouth daily, D5 one half normal saline at 125 milliliters per hour. As the nurse is en route with the oral medication to Mrs. Jones's room, the physical therapist stops him to ask for help getting Mrs. Smith out of bed. Mrs. Smith had a knee replacement yesterday. I got some help to move you up a little bit more. Okay. All right. The nurse helps with Mrs. Smith okay. and then, somewhat flustered and in a hurry, gives her Mrs. Jones's medication. To prevent violations of this right, the nurse could have avoided this error in several ways. Number one, by not allowing himself to be deterred by a non-emergency situation and returning to help the therapist after he gave Mrs. Jones her medication. And number two, by checking Mrs. Smith's armband against the MAR with Mrs. Jones's name on it and asking the patient what her name is.